Welcome back to Alpha 2 Omega. Today we'll be talking about authorship, so let's get right into it. What is authorship? Previously, we've drawn an analogy between the universe and a book, and if we think about an author, they pen down their ideas and thoughts onto a piece of paper. Similarly, the universe can be thought of as that book, and the author brings into being things like me, and other beings around me, other individuals, the sun, the moon, the stars, and anything that the universe contains as far as the eye can see. In other words, authorship implies several qualities that the author must have. Knowing how to write, the ability or power to write, and the fact that they can choose to write or not. Just as the author pens a book with innumerable letters, words, sentences, paragraphs, and a complete story, Likewise, the author to the universe pens every being from the most minute to the most macro, from every individual particle to every celestial body into being at every moment. So it can be said my hand is being authored into being. Anything else that defines me as a physical body is being authored into being, just like everything else physically around me is authored into being. But to not just restrict it to that, but what makes me a human being beyond my physical aspect, the ability to think and to feel and to reason and to act, those things also happen to be brought into being. And the reason I know that is because I have nothing in and of itself to do with authorship. I didn't determine or author how I am as a physical specimen into being. I didn't author how I am as a human being into being, nor can I author anything else into being as they are physically? And then what defines them as individual bodies? For example, the sun, the moon, the stars, the plants, the animals, and other, all other beings around us. Must there be authorship? Well, if we step back for a second, you might ask, is there really an author? And does there need to be an author? I would flip that question around and say, can there be anything other than authorship? And the reason I ask that question is because if we think about it, anything in the world, anything that we experience, anything that we do, requires that something cause it to be. The question though is, do things author themselves then, or must there be an author beyond their own nature? If we take the first position, that things author themselves into being, that means they're their own agent, they're their own cause. And therefore, what we're really saying then is that there are authors to the number of beings in the universe. In reality, authors to the number of particles in the universe at every moment from the beginning of the universe to its end. The question though is, is that possible? Because does any one particle know anything? And not just anything, but anything about itself and anything around it, and therefore, in all the innumerable ways, it can join with other particles to form all things in the universe. Because frankly, just like as we talked about with a book, for an author to author something, a book in this example, it would need to know to write, how to write, to have the ability to write, and then choose to write. If I look at myself, does any one particle, any one particular aspect of myself know anything about what it means to be human? And if we restrict it simply first to the physical specimen, the physical body, do any of the cells in my body know anything about what it means to be a human body? They're just particles at the end of the day. They can be examined under a microscope. They can be broken down. And yet there's nothing there if I examine a cell or an organ that necessitates that there must be a human body. Now, if we extend that to what makes human beings in reality, as I mentioned before, their ability to think, to feel, and to reason, and to act, and to choose, then most definitely we see nothing of them knowing anything about what it means to be human. If we take something we take for granted every day, that's the ability to see. And if we step back and think about it, are we really seeing? Are the particles in our eye really seeing? 
what's actually being transmitted to our brain as what's been taught in modern science. Is there an actual image or is it just neural impulses moving along synapses? If we really do think about it, there's no image in actuality. They are simple, simply the motion of particles, the movement of bodies, and yet I perceive something visually. And based off my perception of things, I can choose to do something. I can act in a certain way. I can think in a certain way. I feel a certain thing. And yet, none of those things, none of those things, including the ability to see, what I'm seeing, and how that impacts me can be found anywhere in the physical body. And we can go even further. For example, something, again, we take for granted every day, the sun, that big ball of gas in the sky that emits energy and heat and radiation down to the earth so that I can benefit, so that the plants and the animals can find nourishment, and that so I may eat and find sustenance. Does the sun really know who I am or really care that I need to live and to breathe and to feel warmth? No, it doesn't know anything. It's just in motion. If we think about it, it's a larger particle, a macro particle, so to speak. And it too is in motion. The question though is, who is authoring its motion into being? And not just authoring its motion, but then therefore authoring what makes it a sun. And then what qualities it may have as a sun, and then how it benefits those things around it. We must then say, if we can't find the author in the nature of being in this world, then the author must be beyond the nature of the physical world. Just like the author can't be found in a book in and of itself, what we do find though are the qualities of the author. The author's knowledge, their ability to write, their choosing to write because of the fact that I'm actually reading the book. What other qualities that the author may have, they know they have knowledge of a particular subject. They may convey that subject with a certain understanding of the reader, taking into account what the reader may know. So in other words, their wisdom and maybe being compassionate in terms of who their audience may be. Likewise, we find the same things in our everyday experience. And yet the author isn't there in this book of the universe. So where must that author be? Then by definition, they must be beyond the nature of the world. Who is this author? Now that we've established authorship, because everything is, and therefore by definition, everything must be brought into being. And then we've established that that author must be beyond the nature of the world, the physical world, and therefore our physical senses. Because just like letters in a book don't know anything about what it means to be a word, and therefore something meaningful, in the form of a sentence or a paragraph or a story. Likewise, particles, which are letters in the manifest world, they too don't know anything about what it means to be a particle and therefore what it means to conform with other particles into another body or being like myself or the things around me. And then therefore they don't know anything about what it means to be a part of the wider world and the order which dictates it. We've established that that author then must be beyond the nature of the world. The question though is, who is that author? Again, if we draw an analogy between a book and the universe, we know who the author must be. And I emphasize must be because again, we can't directly communicate with the author in the physical world. They are beyond our senses, just like the author of a book. We know who the author must be by examining or reading the book of the universe. We know what their qualities must be, that they know how to author and that the things that they do author, they know of them and what makes them them. For example, what makes the sun the sun and what makes me me and what makes you you. And then the ability to do so because it actually happens and I experience it and I'm witness to it and the choosing to do so because if that author didn't choose for things to be, choose for things to author into being, then I wouldn't have any knowledge of it at all, including myself. 
and all the other qualities that come with it. For example, the wisdom in the order of things and the things that I experience that I find sort of enjoyable or merciful or compassionate or beautiful or anything else I can think of. We know the author must be those things, must be in possession of those qualities by our reading of the world. The question though is, who is that author? Well, he's who everyone refers to as God. And if you believe, or in other words, if you've come to a conclusion and are certain that he must be, then it begs the question, why is he authored you and I into being? along with the rest of the book of the universe. And why does he want us to read it? I think I'm going to leave that question to the next video. And until then, think about it. And I'll see you guys next time.